And we are back. Um, so we have done through the level rule, oh, lever rule, and we looked at some phase diagrams and some free energy curves and drawing essentially those values. Um, but now let's talk about phase transitions that are congruent or incongruent, and let's start to uh, basically evaluate and look at invariant points. Um, so congruent versus incongruent phase transitions. A congruent phase tra transition will occur when we go directly from one phase to another. An incongruent phase uh, or transition will go through a two-phase region. So you can see this is liquid. And if I go from liquid directly into here, this line is a pure solid. So this would be a congruent melting point. This is nickel. It goes all the way here to, at this point here, to a liquid. This would be another congruent melting point. This whole thing is one phase of titanium. You can see right here, I go through one phase here. And this is also a congruent melting point here, beta to here. Now, if I go from here to here, I'm in a region that is, this is a liquid, liquidus line. So I'm touching beta plus liquid. We'll learn how to fill out these two phase regions in a bit. But the this would not be a congruent melting point. It'd be an incongruent melting point. So if we had to pass through a two phase region, that is an incongruent melting point. Now. We're going to encounter lots of different diagrams and phase diagrams, um, but one of the interesting things, and we can look at it from this example, this is kind of like your simple binary eutectic phase diagram. So I have material A, material B, I'm mixing. It's in some alpha phase here, beta phase here. And now, one of the things that we can take away from this diagram is what's called the solubility limit. So if I look at right here, this is, Basically, the maximum amount, so here, I'm. let's say this is like 10% B. What this is saying is I can fit 10% of B into this alpha phase, which right here, it's pure A. So I could fit 10% of B here, and I could still be alpha phase. So there is more, this is a, a large solubility limit, to be honest. But if I look over here, let's say this is like 7%. Um, or this is actually would be, let's say it's 93%. So I can only put 7% of A into B and still be beta. So B has a larger solubility in A than A has solubility in B. So we can look at solubility limits um, from these phase diagrams as well. Um, you'll notice something very interesting here. Um, here, we have an invariant point. So R D plus P equals C plus one. We always know we're two components, so this is three, but we're touching three phases here. Alpha, beta, and liquid. This is an invariant point. And this is a very specific type of invariant point, and it is called a eutectic. A eutectic goes from, I always go from high temperature to low, goes from a single phase liquid to an alpha, plus beta, so two-phase solid region. Um, it has the characteristic that eutectics, or really any U, EU, e, EU type diagram, has kind of this bunny rabbit ears feature. So you can kind of see it. If you have this type of feature, it's going to be a U. But we can also have a eutectoid, which is a single solid phase to two different solid phase regions here. We can also have a peritectic, which looks more like this, or it can look like this. So a peritectic, ick is liquid. So I go from a liquid plus a solid to a single phase solid region here. So liquid plus alpha, and this single line is beta. This could be beta, and this could be liquid plus alpha as well, if it's a peritectic looking feature. I could also have a peritectoid where I go from alpha plus beta to gamma. So a two-phase solid region to single-phase solid region. These are four really important invariant points that we are going to examine in phase diagrams. And they're also important in processing too because we don't have to go through this kind of two-phase processing region here. Um, so let's go ahead and let's start to look at some phase diagrams. And specifically, not this one, Let's start to look at how to, actually, let's see if we have, actually, we're going to go ahead and we are going to open up our graph here because that's, I think, most helpful. So let's go 
into canvas. Canvas here. Do, 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 do. Send me a push. Remember me from for all time. Never, ever, ever change it. So let's go ahead. I'm just going to verify who I am. Then we're going to go to files in our appropriate course. And then files. We're going to go to lectures. And we're going to go to lecture four. And we're going to identify some phase diagrams. Let's download it up. Should be good to go. I can actually open that up here. So the key thing whenever you're starting with a phase diagram is you want to look at and start to label regions in a phase diagram. Um, so for example, here, I want to start to label regions. So if I'm looking at this region here, it's touching, if I just draw an isotherm, which is a flat horizontal line, or actually this probably is better. Oops, I'm touching it instead of annotating it. Oh yeah, it's, no, it's not gonna work. If I'm touching this central region right here, and maybe we can actually, let's annotate like so. Here we go. If I annotate, if I look at this here, if I'm looking at, this is a two phase region. What is it touching? If I go all the way to here, I'm touching liquid. If I go all the way here, I'm touching this region right here. If I'm here, this is also a two phase region. I'm touching liquid and then I'm touching Al3 and I whatever. If I'm here, I'm touching Al3 and I2. And if I'm touching here, I'm touching Al and I. So it's a way where we can quickly label these. So, so I'm touching here liquid and Al. In this region, I'm touching Al and Al3 and I. And so, and so, and so, and so, and so. So you can label all of these regions in that phase diagram. And that's a good starting point to kind of figure out. And here we're identifying congruent melting points and we have one more congruent melting point right here. And you can see that indicated. So I'm just gonna put my laser over there. We can also start to look at invariant points. So let's start from the left and go to the right. There's an invariant point right here. What is it? I'm going from liquid to a two-phase solid region it has the bunny rabbit ears feature, so that's a eutectic. What about right here? This looks like a peritectic feature, but is it peritectic or peritectoid? Well, I have liquid, so it's an ick. Liquid plus a solid phase right here to a new solid phase region right here, this straight line. This straight line indicates that I am dealing with a single phase solid region. There could be some width to it, like here, and especially right here, or it could just be a straight line. So this is going to be a peritectic. What about here? Liquid, solid to a new solid, that's another peritectic. What about right there? Liquid plus ALNI to a new solid phase, ALNI3? Good. What about right here? Solid phase plus solid phase to a brand new solid phase, that's a peritectoid. Oops. And I'm going to go back here, liquid to gamma plus gamma prime, which is two solid phase regions. That's going to be eutectic, peritectoid, and that's it. We can also calculate compositions. So if I were to look at this initial composition at this temperature, I'm in a two phase region, composition of Al3 and I and liquid. So if I want to calculate the composition that's in the liquid, I would draw a straight line and it'd be about 10% liquid. If I want the composition that's in the Al3 and I, it's going to be right here, and it's going to be 25. I could then use this. This material is mostly Al3 and I. So if I wanted to calculate the fraction, I would look at this length, 10 minus, what is it, like 20, 23, over 25 minus 10. And then if I want the other one, I would flip it. So, and you can do the same thing here. So that is how we analyze phase diagrams. So um, that's pretty much it. There's an additional video um, that you can do to draw the free energy curves, and you'll see that in, in another video. So see you then. Thanks.
拜。